is a beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, I know it's supposed to get really hot, and I kind of wonder if we're not being teased like, this is what the weather could be like, <laughs> but instead we're going to make it really hot for you the next couple of days. So I was definitely enjoying the morning today. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful morning to be sitting outside and enjoying the, the birds singing and the little breeze that was blowing through the porch this morning. It was a glorious morning to be here. Well, this morning, we're going to dive into another awesome question. And before we do, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for allowing us to be here this morning, and thank you for the beautiful weather that you have provided. Lord, we know it won't last long, and so let us just be absolutely grateful for what you have given us today. Lord, this morning as we dig into your word and we ask ourselves a very important question today, I ask that you open our hearts, that you open our minds. Allow us to take the information in that you have prepared for us. Help us to see it and how it applies to our lives. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Lord, help us this morning to remember that we are here to worship you. Help us to stay focused on that. And Lord, I pray this morning that every word from my mouth is yours and not mine. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So the question I have for you this morning to ponder is how is it with your soul? How is your soul today? You know, we often ask people, how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? How are things going in your life? But have you ever thought about how is it with your soul? How is your soul today? Luke chapter 18 is where our scripture reading is going to come from. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18. Give me an amen when you get there. Amen. amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Okay, Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 18. And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, All these I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, One thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Mm. It's a really good lesson that we're learning from Jesus today. This account is recorded not just in Luke, but it's recorded in Mark 10 and Matthew 19, if you want to go read the other accounts. What we know about this, it says rich ruler here in Luke, we also know that he was young, okay, from the other two accounts that he was a young man. We don't know what kind of a ruler he was. It is kind of thought that it's possible that maybe more in the political arena that he was a ruler. In Mark's account, it tells us that this rich young man, this rich young ruler, ran up to Jesus. <coughs> And then knelt before him. Given his position in life, being rich and a ruler, the fact that he ran up to Jesus shows his excitement to learn from him. And the fact that he knelt before Jesus displayed the reverence that he had for the position that Jesus was in. 
Okay, so we have this rich young man that ran up, he knelt before Jesus, but then he asked him, he says, good teacher. This is an odd word to use. It's kind of an oxymoronic almost sort of thing because he calls him good, but teacher. He kind of understands who Jesus is because Jesus replies, why do you call me good? There's only one that's good, and that's God. So he kind of understands who Jesus is, but at the same time, he doesn't because he calls him a teacher. He doesn't call him the Messiah. He calls him a rabbi. All throughout the recordings, no one is ever called a good rabbi in Jewish culture because good is reserved for God and God alone, which is why Jesus asked him, why do you call me good? Do you recognize who I am? But yet you're still calling me a teacher. So maybe you sort of get who I am, but you're not quite there. A good teacher. A good teacher. But then he asks this question. What must, and you got to catch all the wording there. What must I do to inherit eternal life. This rich young man, I'm going to give him all sorts of props because he was excited. He ran up to Jesus, knelt before him, and he was really excited because he wanted to know what he needed to do for his eternal soul. He wanted to know what he needed to do for his soul to be in eternity forever. But he didn't get it. Because he asked, what do I have to do to inherit? What is an inheritance? It's given to you. Usually when somebody in your family passes on, or maybe before they pass on, they give you your inheritance. Do you have to do anything to get that? No, you're just part of the family. That's the way it rolls. You're just part of the family, so we give you your inheritance. You don't have to do anything to earn that. And he's asking, what do I have to do to inherit? Well, you don't have to do anything. It's already given to you. Jesus' gift is free. You and I don't have to do anything but believe and repent. We don't have to have any great grandiose actions. We don't have to donate a million dollars to some charity organization. The only thing God asks you to do is believe. Repent of your sins. So there's nothing you have to do to inherit. And Jesus asked him this. He said, you're, you're really missing the point. And so Jesus tells him, well, you know the commandments. And he lists off all the commandments. And the young ruler, he says, well, all of this I've done since my youth. Does that remind you of anybody else? All this I've done for my youth. Didn't Paul say that? All of these commandments I have kept since my youth. Now, whether or not I really believe that this young man kept all the commandments, I don't know. Because that whole honor your father and mother thing, I'm telling you, we have teenagers. And teenagers really test your patience. So I don't know if he really did or not. But Jesus heard him said this, say this, and then he said to him, One thing you still lack. There's one thing you're still not doing. He said, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Now, did Jesus say... Because you have money, 
and you haven't given it to the poor, and you have many possessions that you can't get into heaven. Is that what he's saying here? No, that is not what he's saying. Okay? Do not misunderstand the scripture. There is nothing wrong with having possessions and having wealth. This was a lesson for this young man. Because when Jesus saw him, Jesus knew the one thing that he still lacked was that he put his possessions above his relationship with God. The one thing that this young man needed to do was to get rid of those possessions. Even in the Jewish law, back in Deuteronomy, it says to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And that is the one thing that this young man was lacking because he had many possessions. And that was his sticking point. He idolized his possessions above his relationship with God. That is where he was, and Jesus recognized this. And so he told him to get rid of the idols that he had, to get rid of those things that were hanging him up so that he could have this awesome and amazing relationship. But instead, he went away sad. The other accounts say he was full of sorrow because he owned a lot. There's a movie I watched one time it's called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. If you haven't watched it, it's a fantastic film. It's kind of a, a comedy of sorts. Well, it is a comedy. But in the end of the film, throughout the entire film, they were working on a passion play for this particular church. And the main character, the main actor that was playing Jesus in this, he didn't get who Jesus was until the very end. <clears throat> and there's a scene when this rich young man comes up to him and they repeat what was said here. And I really picture Jesus like they portrayed it in this film because the character that portrayed Jesus, he looked at this rich young man and he told him, go sell everything that you have and then come and follow me. And the rich young man, his face was downcast and he turned away. And then the character that played Jesus looked at him and said, don't go you have no idea what you're missing you have no idea what you're lacking please don't walk Joni said this morning in our welcome that we should reflect back on things that have even happened on us this last week and see how God has moved in it. I've been pondering this question, how is it with your soul for some time? I think it was, what, the first day of class, maybe, Cherry, that we were asked that in my, in my class that I shared that with you. And it's been going over and over in my mind, how is it with your soul? How do you know how it is with your soul? How can you tell what it is with your soul? This week, I think I've understood the answer to that question better than I have in a long time. It's when we recognize God moving in everything we say and we do. When we can feel it in the pit of our stomach, when we know that God is there with us, when we can tell that Jesus is working through us, that is how I know it as well with my soul. 
want to share with you some things that have happened this week. And they may seem simple and just inconsequential, but when you pile them up, my soul is overflowing today with just joy and excitement for Jesus Christ and what he's doing in my life and through me, touching other people. So the first thing that happened this week, and I know some of you will think it's crazy, is I went to, uh, well, Tuesday I normally do my devotional at the Triangle House in the morning. And the conversation that I had with those young women this week was empowering. To see God working in their lives is amazing. And then on Tuesday, I know some of y'all think I'm crazy, I drove three and a half hours to go to revival at my friend's church. I didn't get home till quarter one on Wednesday morning. But the revival was just what I needed. It was like the tip of the iceberg for the day. The message, the singing, the friendship, it was awesome and amazing. It just like fueled me up even more. And then on Thursday, you may or may not have seen him on Facebook. God told me to make some videos. I know it probably looked really easy, but when you watched it on Facebook, that was not easy to do. In a private setting like this, it's easy to share my story. But to share my story on a video of where I had no idea where it's going, who it's going to touch, what kind of commentary is going to come back. That made me nervous. Y'all can't tell, but I had sweat dripping down my back while I was making those videos. I could feel it rolling down. Oh, Lord, are you sure this is what we need to do? So let me tell you how it is with my soul. Those videos. Have already been watched more than 600 times as of this morning. I have not only received comments back on Facebook, but email, text message, phone calls from people that know me and maybe didn't know my story across the United States. I had one friend text me last night, and he said, I'm sorry about the typos, but I'm in tears. I had another friend comment last night. I haven't seen her since we graduated high school, pushing 25 years ago. She commented, she said, I always knew you were going to be a pastor. Because even when we were kids, you were so kind and compassionate and welcoming. And I'm honored to still call you my friend. I have not seen this woman in 25 years. And I know some of what she has walked through. How is your soul? How is it with your soul? I've had to give up my idols to make sure that Jesus is first in my life. And is it easy? It was not easy for the rich young ruler. And it is not easy for us. Because we have these things that we cling to in our life. We have these ideas and ideologies that we cling to. separate us from Jesus. They separate us from our eternal life. From being able to go and follow him in everything that we do. In everything that we say. And in everything that So this morning, 
as we close and we prepare to sing a beautiful song. How is it with your soul? If you need prayer this morning, please come forward.